They say you cannot judge a book by its cover. I don't know who they are and why they're telling me what I can and cannot do, but I can tell you this, I do judge books by their cover. I judge everything by its cover. I judge you by your cover as well. I think what they might mean is that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. And I don't know if that's good advice. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But I could say that you absolutely can and should judge music by the album cover. Today we're going to be listening to the song Attacking the Enemy by the Greek true metal band Embrace Fire from their 2006 album Savage. And I promise you, the cover of Savage is absolutely an accurate representation of the music within. I bought Savage shortly after it came out in 2006, entirely because of this album cover. I don't know anything about the guy that painted it. Uh, in the booklet, he's credited as A colon Krom colon V. And I'm thinking his first name might be Alex. But because he used a, a fake name, I, I can't find any information about the guy. Um, I believe he might have done one of the album covers for the Greek metal band Dexter Ward but I'm not even sure about that. And it's honestly a shame because had he used his real name or, or any sort of actual name, there's a chance he would have gotten a lot more recognition and he might even be famous. But uh, regardless of that, I mean, just look at the cover. This is Stone Age barbarism at its best. The hero on the cover is literally tearing the guts from his enemy with his teeth. He's climbing on top of a pile of his own slain enemies. There's a bloody naked chick behind him. There's fire in the background, a skull with a spear going through it in the foreground. I mean, this is really the perfect illustration of self-righteous supremacy. And that is the heart of all true metal. And this album certainly delivers on the promise of the cover. Obviously, you could tell by looking at it, there's going to be some songs on here about the romantic portrayal of battle. Attacking the Enemy, the song we're going to listen to shortly. That's what that song is about. But there's more to Savage than just that. There are songs on here about pagan sacrifice, about demonism, about the virtue of retribution. Um, in fact, if you go back a few episodes here on Czar's Top Shelf, I did one about Manowar, where I explained how Manowar invented heavy metal. And they created these heavy metal virtues. All the virtues that Manowar created are represented here on Embrace Fire's album, Savage. And that's not to say that Embrace Fire is like a copycat band of Manowar. They're not like Manowar musically much at all. There's a few little influences that you're going to hear, but they are a very unique band. I, I could say there's no other band that sounds like Embrace Fire, but there's just something about Greece. I don't know what it is, but for whatever reason, these Greek metal bands are able to um, embody the aesthetics that Manowar created and do so by putting a, their own spin on it, making it unique. Um, something about Greece. I don't know what it is, but in 2023, my three favorite albums that came out were all Greek bands. There's just something magical about Greece, and, and Embrace Fire is a Greek band. But this... Uh, Savage. I've got the, the Evil Records original pressing. Evil Records is just Embrace Fire's own label. It's not like an actual record label. Uh, you may not be able to find this specific pressing, but that doesn't matter because uh, two or three years ago, Cult Metal Classics came out with a reissue. You should get the reissue because it's got all the same tracks plus some live tracks and then like an expanded booklet with more photos and stuff inside. So I don't know, man. Like if uh, if you like something, you should be expected to pay for it. So don't don't be a a cheap skate freeloader. If you like this music, go out and buy it like you're supposed to. Okay, I'm not going to rant all about that right now. Let's let's talk about the band for a second. Well, to be honest, I don't know much about the band. Just like I don't know much about the artist on the cover because the guys in the band use the goofy fake names in the booklet. So um, the only person that used his real name is Dave Chrysonis. And I know that Dave is in a, a traditional heavy metal band from Greece called Darklon. And Darklon is really good. I mean, they're a very, very good band. I recommend you check them out. Solid, solid uh, traditional heavy metal. 
As far as the other guys, um, I don't know. I don't know what they're up to. They around the same time as Embrace Fire, maybe shortly after, um, they had a side project called Wild Machine. And there's almost, uh, I think it was three of the four guys from Embrace Fire were in uh, Wild Machine. And um, that band, I think, got a little bit more recognition, a little more popularity, but it wasn't my thing. I mean, it wasn't really even metal. It was like a, a skid row sort of a sleazy glam rock band where they sang about like drugs and alcohol and chasing girls and stuff like that. That sort of thing was never, never my thing at all. But I think they probably went that route because that was maybe a bit more popular. Uh, maybe it was more of a, a visual band. They were maybe getting more shows booked or something. I don't know. But even uh, today, Wild Machine is not together anymore. So I really don't know what's ever become of the other guys in the band. Um, it's a shame because all, all four of them are extraordinarily talented musicians. Um, and all of the songs on Savage are just very well constructed. They're well-written songs, and the themes that the songs are about are all very solid. Um, Embrace Fire, they, they could have been much bigger than they are. I mean, they're almost unknown today. And um, I think that's a bit of a shame. And while I, I'm sad that I don't know the reason why Embrace Fire never did anything beyond Savage. I mean, this was their only album. They had two demos before this, and then this was it. Um, well, that's a bummer that there's nothing else, and I don't know why they didn't uh, continue to record. Um, I'd prefer that than them constantly trying to recapture the magic of the first album with release after release after release. There's a lot of bands that should have just made one album and finished. Um, Embrace Fire did that. They were they were a fire that glowed brightly. They were a, a, a bonfire of, of heavy metal that just stopped. And I think that's probably preferred in many cases. I mean, what's the saying? It's better to uh, burn out than fade away. Embrace Fire was a fire that pretty much burned out. And I'm okay with that. Okay, enough yapping from me. We're going to be listening to Attacking the Enemy from Savage. It's the closing track on the album. Certainly my favorite one. I think it's the best song on the whole thing. Um, it's a short song, a little bit over three minutes long. So I'm going to pause it every few seconds to kind of share what's going on in my head, let you know what I'm thinking. And uh, without further delay, here comes Attacking the Enemy. Here we go, right off the bat, man. So you hear this opening bass solo, and uh, it does sound slight, slightly Manowar, right? You might be thinking, is this a Manowar band or something? It's very Manowar influenced, but then you get a thrashy guitar riff, and like, wait a second, Manowar doesn't really do thrash. This is something unique. And then when the drums hit, you know for sure this is not Manowar. Man, these drums are just crazy and unchained. The whole thing just kicks off crazy. Unchained, Maniacal, Savage, the name of the album. Let's keep listening. Attacking the 
All right, got to stop it, got to stop it. Man, uh, nobody in this band is refined. They're not refined musicians, but they're talented musicians. That's the whole point. This is a great example of talent without precision. What makes this great is the expression in the performance, what they're actually doing, how they're communicating with their voice and with their instruments. There's a just a, a raw energy here that so perfectly suits the subject matter of the song. Um, the singer's name is Johnny Hotz. I know, I know. H O T T. Um, his voice, his 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 lyrics, his his vocalization is nothing but just a war cry. And Alex Z on the drums, man, he is just downright insane. I absolutely love, love, love the drums. The whole rhythm section of this song, of this song and this band, and everything about him is fantastic. Um, there's a there's a saying in English. I don't know if it's an American expression or British or what, but it's called like uh, getting over your skis or getting ahead of your skis. And um, it's kind of like you're just getting ahead of yourself. You know, you're, you're almost dangerously going to fall over yourself. And that's how I feel about the drums and the rhythm section of this band and this song. It's like the drums are trying to catch up to themselves. They're uh, playing catch up and, it, and, it, and it, it makes me envision running into battle where you are like stumbling over the corpses of, of your slain enemies, but still staying afoot, still staying ahead and then thinking ahead in the battlefield, you know, three, four or 500 yards ahead, what lies ahead of you and how you're going to conquer that next. It's just weird. It's like a, a just like a constant stumbling, but staying a, afoot and continuing to fight um, but the perception of like several paces ahead of you in the battle, it's just really unique. There's, there's not a lot of bands that can do this with the rhythm section, especially nowadays where like most of the bands, they might as well just be using a drum machine. Fantastic rhythm section. I don't know if I'm explaining what's in my head well or not, but that's how I feel. That's what I said. Let's go ahead and keep on playing. It should be said, these lyrics are not poetry, right? <laughs> um, but this is an instance where that sort of awkward European style of writing lyrics, it just suits the music perfectly. The word choices aren't necessarily beautiful, but nor should they be beautiful. There's, um, there's just an effectiveness to the, to the lyrics and to the word choice. And uh, there's an impact that you feel based on what is being said. I think it's fine. Let's just finish this up. This is a short song. Like I said, a little bit more to go. Play it on out from here. Here we go. Right on, that was Attacking the Enemy by Embrace Fire. I told you last week when I did the Eden Abes video, remember Eden, he's the uh, the world's first hippie. Well, I told you I'd be back with something a little more violent. So hopefully this song was violent enough for you. Uh, man, the early to mid 2000s, there were so many great true metal bands releasing so much great music. But I think what separates Embrace Fire from everybody else is the uh, maniacal expression of those true metal ideals in the performance specifically. There's really no other bands that sound quite like this. And I think that's what makes 
attacking the enemy and the album Savage and Embrace Fire, the band, that's what makes them top shelf. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the song. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you enjoyed it, you don't need to leave a comment. I don't care if you do or if you don't. You don't have to let me know. But I, I think what's more important is that you let your enemies know. That's what matters most. So thank you for watching this episode of Czar's Top Shelf. And I hope that I see you in the next one.